Oh man, people get on the internet and just say the craziest things for clout, and it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand to the point where it's like actually, it might actually like start hurting people's businesses. But I guess it's always been that way, and this is the internet, so I should just get used to it. What's going on, internet? I'm Mike, and today we're going to be canceling DreamCon, or at least that's what this one content creator wishes would happen after her viral TikTok blew up over the last few days. And before we get into that, I want to thank all you guys for the love and support on the last video. My last video has become the highest viewed one on my channel, and I gained a decent amount of subscribers, so I appreciate you guys coming through and watching it. I didn't think that many people would care about my take on the Carly Russell stuff, but Hey, here we are. I appreciate you guys. Now let's get back into this haters opinion about DreamCon. So if you're somewhat in the blurred space or the content creator space, you know what DreamCon is. And you might have seen this video floating around on your socials the last few days. I just want to come on here and say this is no hate to some bros or anybody in that group. And I normally don't even come on TikTok and do stuff like this. But DreamCon, RDC, any, anything involving DreamCon needs to be canceled. I'm here to de-influence anybody that's been thinking about DreamCon, wanting to go to DreamCon. Do not waste your money. I took time off of work. I bought the tickets. I registered, came to everything on time. And this is the most disorganized thing I've ever seen in my life. This event had 22,000 people and barely any staff, barely any volunteers making sure everything is working accordingly. The app is crazy, it's crashing, you get registered, they unregister you for stuff, and it's insane. Platinum and gold means nothing. People that didn't even have no badges, that weren't even registered, were getting into platinum and gold past events by sneaking in and nobody is stopping anybody. Everybody's bone rushing, everybody's line cutting and jumping and nobody's stopping anything. Today, the Sun Bros had a meetup from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, I was registered since yesterday. I got a notification that they unregistered me, which is weird saying that it's full. How are you unregistering somebody that already got into the registration? So anyway, I was waitlisted. The event started at 5 p.m. I got there at 1 p.m. Waited in line four to five hours to meet the Sun Bros. This was the only reason I came to Austin, Texas, for all the way from Chicago to see them. I didn't come to see anybody else. And I stood there from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. just to see them. They let people that were not registered, that didn't have a gold or platinum pass, cut. No volunteers, no staff said anything to these people. They didn't even have a rope in place. They just pr placed a rope about when it was about 4 or 30. Like, it's crazy. And mind you, it's 22,000 people at this event. Some bros, each member in the Sun Bros has millions of followers on their own. And you're only going to let 130 people in. I understand everybody can't get in, but it would be okay if they just let everybody file in, take a picture, leave, take a picture, leave, take a picture, leave. But even that didn't happen. And even the 130 people that made it into the room to see Sun Bros, all of them didn't even get a picture. And that is crazy. Like you're wasting people's time and money and everything they spent. And just to let people jump and cut and get into the event, it is crazy. Like, this is making me so mad. And it's not even just the Sun Bros event. It's been this whole experience has been horrible. Do not go to DreamCon ever again. I will never be coming back. Sun Bros, you guys need to make your own event because this is terrible. So, before we get into that entirely stupid take, let's... <laughs> I, couldn't even <clears throat> I couldn't even get through that and I'm kind of sick, sorry. Uh, let's try that again. So before we get into that completely stupid take, here's some background about what DreamCon is. DreamCon is an anime and game convention that started as a dream, but was brought to fruition by social media influencers, RDC World. RDC World dream of bringing together like-minded individuals to enjoy and celebrate multiple interests, including pop culture, comics, art, cosplay, music, and much more. As of 2023, DreamCon will take place in Austin, Texas, which is where it was this year. At DreamCon, it doesn't matter if you're a novice or an avid fan, this is a place where you will be accepted as you are, with guests ranging from notable voice actors to popular content creators. You never know who might Naruto run into you. DreamCon provides endless entertainment for you all weekend long, with a traditional artist alley, engaging panels, memorable meet and greets, and invigorating concerts. 
DreamCon also has multiple staple events such as the uh, All Stars Super Smash Bros. Tournament, Crew Battle, Dodgeball, Cosplay Contest, and a Runway. So that's what DreamCon is. It sounds great, right? I've had a few friends go. I personally have never been myself. I can't wait to go one year. I hope, hopefully, I can make it next year, but we never know. So I'm not going to give much or any really recognition to this creator because I think they've gotten enough attention over the last few days. And I'm sure this whole take, this whole opinion, this whole video really is a clout grab, a clout chase right now, because why, why would you want to cancel something that has such good meeting and so many people have had great experiences with it just because you yourself had a bad experience there? And I believe, honestly, this is only its fifth year around so it's relatively new compared to a lot of conventions so let's jump into some of the things she brought up in this video so she brought up some bros a lot which they didn't create this this uh, event and she said at the end that she wishes that some bros would make their own event and first first off i want to say her theory of letting just everybody take a picture with them all twenty two thousand, like she said or how many ever more take a picture with them is insane 130 is probably a lot to them just for that but i mean i know taking a picture is a lot quicker of a process but a lot of these people probably pay extra to talk to them or have some kind of short conversation with them so 130 is a lot i'm sorry that you didn't get to experience that but that is a lot of people and having thousands of people go through a meet and greet that is going to take their whole day and they have other things to do so that is probably why they only accepted 130 people i'm not sure i wasn't there so i don't know but that seems pretty accurate from what I've seen so far. So first off, I guess I got to back up. Some bros is also another uh, content creator group. They have other content creators that decided to attend DreamCon along with RDC World. And I think AMP was somewhat there. They had some AMP members. That's another group. I'm trying to explain this to people who don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Thank you for clicking on this video, by the way. I know this is really deep into the nerd weeds, the blurred weeds, but hopefully this makes a little bit of sense of who all these groups are. So I'm going to just break it down. There's AMP, <laughs> there's AMP, there's RDC, and there's some bros. I think those are the biggest three that were there. I'm not sure I wasn't there, but I'm pretty sure I've seen enough videos to know that at least those three groups were there. So she did say that some bros need to make their own group. And I was like, oh, I mean, okay, but who do you think some bros is going to ask for advice when it comes to making a convention if they are at, the RDC convention, they're going to ask them and RDC at this point, out of all those groups I just named, they have the most experience dealing with the convention. They've been doing it for, I guess, five years now. So the trials and tribulations that they're going through, some bros would probably run into the same issues until somebody else like them figures it out first. So them just making a uh, convention right now, I guarantee you, you run into some of the same issues if they made one the next year. So she also says that this event was a waste of money. So it was a waste of money because you spent all your money to try to see what a couple people at a convention full of 22,000 people. So you took off work, you probably spent hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars, and you didn't even get to see the content creator you wanted. That's tough, buddy. That That's tough. I personally think it's kind of wild to Take off work and spend that much money to go see somebody, one, you never even met before that don't know you exist. But I mean, but hey, if people, hey, if y'all want to go spend thousands of dollars to come see me, I'm totally down for it as long as I get like 50%. Y'all can spend the rest on hotels, dining, whatever. Just give me a cut of that. And also, I think she missed the whole point of the convention. If you read what I just read earlier, that came straight from RDC's uh, DreamCon website. So... You came all the way there to meet a group of people whose event it wasn't even for. And you didn't meet other people or talk to anybody else. You didn't have a good time with the cosplay. You didn't attend any other events. None of this was beneficial to you. So I, I just feel like you kind of missed the whole point of the event if you just went there just to see those people. And you had a bad experience with the registration process. That That's kind of wild. So they should be canceled just because... Of that, that, that's crazy. And let me just add, to meet some bros, to meet some bros out of all the people there, you didn't want to meet Cash Money Mark. You wanted to meet some bros. I'm just kidding. Like That is no disrespect or shade to some bros. I actually enjoy their content, and Dante is great. He's like one of the first people I subscribe to on Twitch. So much love to them. I, they're great. So she also mentions the app and the issues that she's had with registration and meeting the some bros. And let me just use this comparison right here. 
recently I went to Disney World and um, don't get me started on the Genie app, the Genie Plus app, whatever it's called. Their app that helps you get fast pass tickets or whatever that will make you lose your mind if you don't know what you're doing. So if Disney can have issues with their app. You didn't think you're going to have issues at a convention with their app and registration and all these things. Not saying that any of this is justified, but think about your choices. So, again, not to minimize these issues, but canceling it seems to be the most extreme option of uh, fixing this problem. And I think she must have been watching The Mandalorian backwards because this is not the way. This is not the way to do it. Instead of canceling things, let's try to help them. Let's try to give them feedback. Let's try to join them if you can. If you see all these issues and you know how to fix them, help them. Help them. They, they, they're a new convention that has pulled in so many people. So I will say the good thing about her video is that it did open up a conversation on social media. I hope this brings a lesson to people who have this type of mentality to just cancel things that weren't perfect for them. The combo that opened up was about black safe spaces and why we should try to be building them up instead of immediately tearing them down. Just because you had a bad experience and it's not perfect doesn't mean the event should end. Let's try to build upon it. Like I said earlier, they've only been around for five years and that that is pretty impressive that they even made it this far with all the support that they've been getting from their community. It's, it's great. It's beautiful to see people need to have grace with things like this and something so new and something of a scale this big. You said there's 22,000 people there. Give them some space and give them some grace to learn and grow. I guarantee you it'll be better next year. So personally, I think this can be related to when people say support black business. I do my best. I do my best at times to go out of my way sometimes to literally support black business. But when I do not get the service or the product that I was hoping for at times, I don't try to cancel them. I try to reach out to the owner, reach out to the business and let them know what they could have done better. And maybe I'll try again next time if they've listened or learned from their uh, issues with whatever it was. But I don't try to just immediately cancel them. I don't go out of my way to be like, don't don't go to this business. They didn't do what I wanted exactly. But sometimes I might go to their competitor for a while until they get their shit together. But I don't cancel them. I think that is such a toxic way of thinking. And that is how no one grows. If somebody went to her business or whatever she's doing and just like, they didn't have a good time with whatever they had, how would you feel if they just tried to cancel you and just shit it on your business? That that wouldn't be good. No one would like that. So I feel like reaching out to the RDC, reaching out to whoever is the smartest move in this situation. And I think that was the clear, correct response not to get on Twitter and tell people not to ever go to this convention. That's just crazy. Uh, uh, oh, boy, man. Man, people are just... This is not surprising, though, honestly. It's, it's not surprising at all. But it appears that RDC is aware of people talking like this, trying to get them canceled. And uh, one of the members was at the convention and said this. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me respond to Look, I really am not taking this. We're not taking this in any, you know, uh, bad way. I do think that when somebody gets online and says it in a way like, Cancel DreamCon. I feel like that is hurtful yeah. because we went from six thousand to twenty thousand in one year, and we didn't even understand what to expect. Yeah. Um, I do want to say that um, yes, we're taking in all the criticism, and we are hurt by it too. We're trying our best. We're, we're we really are, and we're, we're planning on getting way more volunteers, way more staff. And this is our first year in a new city too. We got we had to just leave out of Dallas and come straight to Austin. We didn't know what was going on. It was it was so much hard work. You know what I'm saying? So thank you to the staff and all the volunteers who are trying their hardest. Yeah, and, it's good with this one for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, also more you know more creators and more people showed up than we even imagined to, uh, coming, and it was just very overwhelming. So yes, we messed up a lot. Um, but I just want people to take into consideration as our first year here. We went from this number to this number. And that, um, you know, give constructive criticism and yeah. don't be, you don't have to, like, you know, uh, be hurtful with it. Yeah. Like, cancel RDC, cancel DreamCon, cancel Definitely this. Don't do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's some of the stuff I've been saying. Yeah, and, like, 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I was talking with John about it, like, backstage, literally, like, an hour ago. And, like, we just, like, dog, we, we really, like, like, we ain't, we ain't back there, like, dang, like, oh, uh, we, we, at least we got our money. Like, we're not saying stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I we back there really hurting, like, trying to figure out how to make this a better event. But I don't feel like other conventions get judged like our convention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, well, and I don't really know about think, other conventions, but me personally, like, and I don't have no expectations of you guys, yeah, but it and maybe guys. it's because I like you guys are a lot of my favorite creators. Like I just hold you up to such a high standard. So if that makes sense. No, I understand. I'm just saying like that. That was just my thoughts on the situation. But yeah. thank you. So in all, RDC, I just want to say you guys keep doing your thing. You guys are an inspiration to content creators like me, and I have thoroughly enjoyed watching the growth of the channel. I remember when I first started watching RDC and I had so many comments about their audio issues and their lighting and their camera work. I had so many criticisms and now, and now I don't have any of those criticisms. They got better. They got better. I didn't stop watching them because the quality wasn't where I wanted to see it's full circle, <laughs> but the work ethic and grind that you guys have is phenomenal. And I hope to attend DreamCon one day. I am going to start saving up for it now that now that I've witnessed this crazy take on it. I got to experience it myself. Maybe she's right. Maybe I will go there next year and say it needs to be canceled. But I highly doubt that because I have a brain. Um, but yeah, hopefully next time I get to go and I can meet Cash Money Mock himself and get some cash from him because I am broke. Too broke to go to Texas. But maybe next year. So what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with her? Did y'all go to DreamCon? Uh, what was your experience at DreamCon if you went? I would really love to know. And I really want to see some pictures. So if y'all are on Twitter or X now, if y'all are on X or Instagram or threads, I guess I'm on there too. Uh, let me know. Let me see some uh, pictures. I really want to see how DreamCon went. I've seen some great stuff already. It seems like a place that you want to go. So... That is it for me. I'll see you guys on whatever I'm recording next. Love you guys. Goodbye.